Hello, this is the Maplin 5600S. This is my latest find. Now, uh, these you had to make yourself. I've got another video for the Spectrum Synth, which is a cut down version of this on one of my other videos. Now, this is a, an absolute beast of a keyboard. It's got four oscillators, uh, it's got, uh, you know, LFOs, uh, five lots of mixers, and hmm, a plethora of different things that you can do with it. And you connected each module to each other using this pin board here. This is a 30 by 30 pin board making 900 different holes. Anyway, I'll get back to that later in the video. Now, the thing with this is some of them were made very badly and some of them were made okay. I've seen a couple of examples on YouTube and they don't sound too bad. This, however, has a couple of holes in the back which is missing the jack plug for the foot pedal input and the trigger out port and also one for computer. Computer, this is 1979 to 1980. I don't know what sort of computer people would have attached to these in those days. But anyway, I'm going to open it up and try and get the thing uh, running and have a look at just how good or bad this has been put together. And hopefully I'm, well, I'm planning on trying to get some sound out of this. So bear with me. Let's get in there. I think I've figured out how to get inside this now. There's one little screw on the side here which allows you to lift up the front panel and you've got to take this piece off as well so get inside here ho oh, ho here we go I'll find something to wedge this up and we'll have a look inside there's no obvious signs of uh, burning or components exploding but I found the mains wire and uh, this is going directly to the transformer. So I think what I'm going to do is have a, a bit more of a, a visual look in here first and then I'll try and connect it up to the mains. This is the pin board, it's a C Electro system. Now this is a 30 by 30 pin board and they can be really expensive. That is probably about £300 worth of just uh, pegboard there. Uh, but having a look around inside the circuits, it, it looks reasonably clean and tidy and there's no obvious explosions gone off in there. I have just noticed something's missing there, whether it was supposed to be put in or not, I'm not too sure. And one other obvious thing, there's a, a microchip here that's been lifted off its connector. So uh, if I just look on the front, what that is? Oh, that's a shame. That's filter number two. So that's filter board number two. And yeah, this is being pulled off on purpose for some strange reason. And the mains has been cut off here, leaving the cables nice and bare. So other than that, I can't see any obvious damage. And it looks like everything is there, what should be there. The uh, computer select switch here for the read and write hasn't been connected to anything. So whether that goes to another board, I'm not too sure. There might be a board actually missing. But uh, yeah, it all looks there. Well, as, as much as I know about this, that's the power supply board. Uh, and they look like a a couple of amplifiers, left and right amplifier. So I think we should just risk powering the thing up. Right, let's put the mains on it. Now I'm going to put these wires through this foot pedal switch hole out of the back here and use one of these block connectors. Just for that little bit of safety, just in case anyone wants to try this at home.
and it's on. Something buzzing, but nothing smoking. Right, now I'm going to do a little temperature check across here, just to make sure there's no components getting really hot. Okay, with the with the infrared camera here, I can see uh, the components that are heating up, but there's nothing to warm. I'll just have a little look around with this, and I'll put the pictures up on this screen. So, no, a few warm components there. Transformers fine. No, it looks fine. That board is dead though, for the, the one where the chip has been lifted, it's not sort of uh, showing any heat hardly, so that might need looking into. Just one double check on the power supply board. No, it looks good to go. So, flip it around now and let's have a, a little play with this and see if we can get anything out of it. I'm not getting anything out of the headphones and the two 8 watt amplifiers are cold so I'm not sure if they're even getting any power at all. I'll test that in a bit. However, what I am getting is there is a, a signal. That's the LFO. So that's doing something and it's sending it to the output channel and also, if I go along to the noise filter, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's the noise filter as well. Hmm, let me turn that one up. Yeah, there's some control of the noise filter as well. So, certain parts are actually running on here, and I've got a small degree of control so something's happening uh, I think I'll just test those two little amplifiers that are on board and if not I'll just run it out of this connection here directly into an amplifier at least there I can get some sound now this is the power supply distribution board and I should be getting here about 12 to 14 volts. This is the output that goes to the amplifiers and I'm only getting half a volt. Now all the power rails seem to be okay. That's supposed to be minus 14, close enough. Minus 7, yeah. Uh, plus 5, okay. Plus 7, and last one plus 14. Yeah, close enough. But this output here it's supposed to be 12 to 14 and uh, the only thing I can think of is this TIP 31A here. A TIP 31 is a standard PNP bipolar junction transistor and it's used for power applications. TIP by the way stands for Texas Instruments Power and the 31 is just an arbitrary identifier so I'm going to take that off and just swap it for another one and see if I can get some power out of this to wake the amplifiers up. Now one thing you've got to be careful of here is when you're mounting these transistors when you have to use one of these plastic spacers that is to stop the screw from shorting the emitter down to this plate. Now this one is sort of chewed off at the edges so there's a great possibility that that screw was shorting the emitter of this TIP31 down to this plate which is earthed. I've taken the uh, TIP 31A off the board and these are very very handy devices. The Peak Atlas measuring devices, you get them for capacitors and uh, this is the uh, semiconductor component analyzer and sometimes these can save you a lot of time, you just stick the pins on. I always tend to go 
red, green, blue, RGB, I don't know why. Maybe it's working with televisions in the past. But we just stick that on there, switch it on for a test, and there you go. That says a diode or diode junctions, and we know it's an NPN transistor. There you go, just a cathode and anode. Now, I'll show you what another TIP31 should read. There's another TIP31, so I'll do it again as in red, green and blue. Let's switch on for the test. Now we have an NPN silicon transistor. Uh, we have all the information of the base, then the collector and the emitter, and current gains, test currents, etc. So, that little device has just shown me that that is a diode now, basically. So, that's definitely had it. But I think uh, the reason for that might have been that where the screw goes in the top, this is supposed to be isolated from the metalwork. And the screw might have been screwed down so tightly that it's actually connected the emitter directly to the ground. So, so that's possibly why it's gone. Well, at least, there we go, we found one component. Only another 3,000, 4,000 to go through. Damn. Well, I'll solder this in and see what happens. Now, I've changed this for uh, a new TIP31 and before I plug it all in and test it I'm kind of wondering, uh, these are quite robust little components these are. Maybe something elsewhere is what's made this one fail and the only thing connected to this, apart from the 20 volts that comes in at the beginning, is these two little amplifiers, one for left, one for right, 8 watt amplifiers. So I'm thinking, if one of these has got a problem on it, then that may have caused this to fail. So I'm actually going to disconnect these and test them on a separate power supply, rather than blow up my last TIP31. Now, as you can see, as soon as I turn on the power, the one on the right, is getting quite hot very quickly and drawing much more power than the one on the left so that might be the one with the problem this is getting really hot and I'm going to separate them and see what sort of uh, current they consume each this is what it's uh, drawing through the power supply 0.04 of an amp at 13.5 volts and it's reasonably steady. Power on and it's going a little bit crazy this one is and heating up very quickly it's pulling an amp there so there's the problem. The amplifier on the right is going quite crazy and heating up really quickly and it sounds almost like a, a phaser so uh, that's the problem that has caused this TIP31 to burn out and fail. Yeah, that's the word. So I'm not sure I need these amplifiers actually in here. They only, they only go to the headphone anyway. Uh, as long as I get the signal input off to a jack plug, I can just run it into another amplifier. So that's one step of the journey that I can forget about. I've put the power supply unit back together, it was a little bit fiddly, and uh, a new TIP 31A there, and now I'm going to power it up and see if I'm going to get the correct voltages out of it. So, now the fiddly bit. 